Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, I hope all of you are doing well. Um, first and foremost, before we really get cracking into the nitty gritty details of what we are going to talk about today, which is the urgent need of a goalkeeper and the options that we have available to us, I want to tell you guys, you guys are unbelievable, you're absolutely unbelievable. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yesterday, I told you guys, let's uh, come up with a new like target, right? All of you hitting the likes let's come up with a new target i told you guys 1000 videos uh two videos ago and you smashed it so yesterday i told you you know what let's double it let's hit 2000 you guys smashed 2000 likes i swear to god in three hours i couldn't believe it you guys are unreal and at the moment no word of a lie it's sitting at 3775 likes you've just absolutely just smashed it out of the park it's gone straight out the window it's probably broken my window that's how much you uh you guys have smashed it um honestly thank you all so much it helps me a lot i really appreciate it so this time today we're gonna up it again clearly 4000 seems a little too easy for you because i can tell that's gonna hit 4000 so let's go to five let's see how far we can take this five thousand likes on this video will honestly be the best thing in the world thank you all so much let's get into the nitty gritty Kepa has obviously uh, been causing a lot of problems and we're all unhappy, right? Even the the, the, the neutrals amongst the Chelsea fan base um, were quite, nah, you know what, this is, this is going too far now. You know, even the ones that were protecting him initially, me being one of them, we're all like, nah, you know what, now he's crossed the line, okay? This has gone way too far. <laughs> We've paid 70 flipping million for this guy. And we're getting we're getting no benefit. We're getting no benefit right now. Buying Kepa, no word of a lie, looks like the most expensive panic buy of all time. Because if you remember, the Thibaut Courtois saga was going on, and we needed a goalkeeper. Because Courtois went a well. Um, you, some of you know my feelings on that. I did a video on my other channel at the time when it was all kicking off, and I was in my car having a rant and telling Courtois to get lost. Some of you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but we needed a goalkeeper and um there were rumors about Allison Liverpool ended up getting him we went in for Kepa had to pay 70 we paid 70 signed him to a 7 year deal and here he is he hasn't lived to expectation whatsoever we've been patient with him there have been occasions where some fans have lost it with him and you know rightfully so now we look at it rightfully so um i think a lot of chelsea fans now probably 99% are willing to let him go and are now saying you know what he needs to move on fair play so what we're going to do in this video is look at the options and look at the latest who is linked with a move to Chelsea when it comes to the goalkeeping department I'm gonna throw two names in there who I think are the most probable who are the ones doing the rumor circulation the ones that I've heard of and I'm sure some of you have heard of we're gonna get into detail and see which one would be best to come to Chelsea. We're going to start off with Oblak. Oblak is Atletico Madrid's prime goalkeeper and they, I'm sure, don't want to let him go. There's rumours apparently of a little bit of turmoil in the camp in terms of his unhappiness for whatever reason. Probably something just, you know, really small. Nothing, nothing major because he's done a fantastic job when you look at what he's done at Atletico Madrid. The amount of clean sheets that he has held um, in this season is, well, he's second. Thibaut Courtois, obviously Real Madrid winning La Liga. But next comes Oblak. And he's second with 17 clean sheets in 38 matches, a percentage of 44.7%. Um, considering Atletico finished fourth in La Liga, uh, that's, quite, that's quite impressive. <laughs> that's really impressive. I'm not going to look at Kepa's clean sheet record because I don't want this video to be depressing. So, um, yeah, we're going to focus on, on the targets instead. It's a fantastic ratio. We look at Oblak and what he, what he can offer. He's a fantastic world-class goalkeeper. We all know this. He's He makes his presence known. He's big. He's confident. He's assertive. And if there's one quality to Oblak's game, which I love, is he never stays on his line Kepa is married to his line and as a goalkeeper you can't do that because if your positioning is wrong you don't make yourself look big you are exposing more space 
of the goal for players to exploit. It's it's just it's maths. It's simple math, simple physics. It, you know, if you're a year uh, a year flipping six student, you would understand that, right? If you're coming at the end of primary school, you would understand the logic in that. If you are on your line, right, compared to a goalkeeper that is slightly far from his line, the one who's not on his line is exposing less space is making himself look bigger and is giving himself more of a chance to make the saves that are necessary when a striker is taking a shot or someone is taking a, a, a set piece or whatever. You make himself look bigger, the chances are you're going to concede less. Oblak is fantastic at that. His positioning is one of his strengths. Kepa is one of his weaknesses. There's one key, key element here that we need to analyse. A goalkeeper that's brave. A goalkeeper that's confident and a goalkeeper that comes out during set pieces to go and get the flipping ball, right? Oblak, master at that. Kepa, one of his worst traits. <laughs> you know, he's, 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 he comes across naive, scared. I'm assuming just scared. I'm assuming he's just not confident. And as a goalkeeper who's young, hitting his prime, you can't have that. At a top club, you just can't have that. So... Oblak in that department would sort us out. Sort us out. But there's one problem with Oblak. And this is where I'm going to have to spoil the party. And I wish I didn't have to. Unless, unless Roman Abramovich is, you know, doing all right for himself. Which I am guess he is. But but at the same time, we are living in tough times. And at the same time, you got to be realistic. you got to be realistic. When you look at Oblak, he has a release clause. What is his release clause? This is going to scare you if you don't know it already. 109 million. I mean, considering that yesterday I spoke about Jimenez. And yes, thank you so much for those that reminded me of the pronunciation of his name. It's not Jimenez, it's Jimenez. Um, <laughs> so yes, thank you for that, guys. I appreciate it. Jimenez is... Uh, contract has a release clause as well. What's his release clause? It's the same. So if we're going to get ourselves both Jimenez and Oblak, we're going to have to fork up £220 million. It's just, it's just not happening. It's, it's just not happening. Let's be real. As I said, financial fair play has been relaxed. If Chelsea are going to do that, then we're, we're winning the title. I'm I'm just I'm putting it out there. Liverpool fans, keep keep the trophy warm. Because if Chelsea are going ahead with spending, let alone what we've already spent, Werner, Ziesch, Havertz coming in, money has been put on that, right? If we're spending an additional 220 million on Oblak and Jimenez, just mate, you might as well get get your Premier League title, wrap it up in blue wrapping paper, put it in the post, straight to Stamford Bridge today. Because, you know, next season, it's it's a write-off. <laughs> it's a write-off. Now, a release clause doesn't necessarily mean the club has to fork out that money and that's the end of it. No. What Chelsea can do is try and negotiate. And the other party, it's up to them. If they turn around and say, no, 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 no. There's a release clause. Pay it or leave. you got to listen. If they say, no, okay, you want to you wanna negotiate? Okay, let's let's negotiate. Then cool, we might be in a good uh, negotiating position, and we might be in a, in a place where we might be able to bring that fee down. And if that's the case, fantastic. I don't see that happening with Oblak. I see that a possibility with Jimenez because Jimenez has been injury prone. Jimenez has come down the pecking order in terms of who's being selected as part of Atletico's back line. So there is a higher chance of being able to save some money with Jimenez you won't save money with Oblak you just won't we are going to have to fork out 109 million for Oblak and that's that now would I do it absolutely if the funds are there do it no problem right if money is not a factor here do it it's fine if money is a factor then we can't be stupid that's logical and if Oblak doesn't happen I would understand let's look at the alternative option the alternative option here is Onana. Onana of Ajax. Now, Onana of Ajax, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one, right? Because I think he's a decent goalkeeper. I think he's good, yeah? But the stats are not working in his favour. And 
I'm scared. My gut, my gut is telling me I'm scared he could end up going in the same direction as Kepa. Maybe not, you know, completely in the same direction as Kepa, but I'm scared he'll disappoint. He won't be as brilliant as we need a goalkeeper to be right now. He comes at a much lower fee. You know, 25 million, we've got him. Let me just put that out there. It, it's cheap. <laughs> it's really cheap, right? Ajax have apparently, uh, you know, said it's okay if he leaves this summer as well. So that puts us in, in a great position. As I said, he's a good goalkeeper. If you look at this season, though, 24 games, 8 clean sheets. And considering Ajax won the title, considering that the Dutch league isn't a defensive league. The Dutch league has loads of goals. If you want goals, go to the Dutch league. I have a friend, right? And when I was at uni, he'd done this. And it was smart because he won a lot of money. But he'd go to the bookies. And he wouldn't put bets on the Premier League, La Liga or whatnot. No, he'd put bets on Dutch football. And you know why? He'd put over and under. Over and under, if you don't know, are the bets of uh, how many goals are scored in a game. And it has to be either over or under a certain number. And if you put it, you know, over or under, depending on what happens, you win money. Um, he'd always put over. He'd put this match over, this match over, this match over, this match over. And it always happened because the Dutch league and the Dutch second division, there's goals every single day. It's, it doesn't stop, right? Defense is non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> so I can understand why Onana wouldn't have that many clean sheets, but eight clean sheets in 24. When you look, when you look at Oblak and you see 17 clean sheets in 38 for a team that finished fourth, and he got second in terms of the clean sheets, one behind Thibaut Courtois of Real Madrid who won the title. <sighs> yeah, you know. Now, as I said, Onana, good, good goalkeeper, is brave. Has that element to his game as well. He's brave. He's confident. He's someone who likes to come out. He's someone who likes to throw himself about. And he's someone who's a very good shot stopper. Someone who can save a shot from distance. Kepa, we know, has difficulties with that. The one thing that I see similar to him, as I said, in contrast to Oblak, who likes to come off his line and make himself big, Onana doesn't really do that. Onana does stay on his line. And that's where I'm scared. I'm scared that... With the Premier League and the pressure and the quality that we see. Is he going to perform the way we need a goalkeeper to perform? I think he'd be better than Kepa. I'm just not sure he'll be that much better than Kepa. And that's where I can understand the cheap fee. And I can understand it'll be good business. And I think we would be getting, getting better than what we have already. But... I need certainty, lads. I need certainty. We need a goalkeeper that's going to come in and, and revolutionise things. We've got Peter Cech in the stands looking and crying. He's like, I didn't die for this, guys. You know, I, made, I made it legendary in between those posts. What's going on, guys? So, Onana, one, you know, one performance that sticks in my head. Oblak against Liverpool. Do you remember Champions League where Atletico knocked Liverpool out? Iconic. Iconic. I remember watching that game and thinking, flipping now Oblak is amazing. Amazing. And when you see that against Liverpool, right now, right now the best team in England, the best team in Europe, possibly the best team in the world, you see such a performance like that over two legs. Domination. They just couldn't get anything really past him. It just makes you makes you look and go, yeah, he's the one. We need that guy. We need that guy. But it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And as I said, if we're going to be spending on a left back, we're going to be spending on a centre back. Jimenez is the rumoured target. We're going to be forking out all of this money. Roman, it's over to you, mate. If you can fork out that much money, be my guest with absolute pleasure. And if you can't, I will completely understand. <laughs> but... As I said, right now we are in a position where, you know, we need we need these targets. We need a goalkeeper, we need a centre back, and we need a left back. And, you know, if we don't get it, we're gonna struggle. So there we are, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Would you go for Oblak? Would you spend that money? Would you go for Jimenez and trying to negotiate a, a lower fee, even though he has the same release clause as Oblak? Or would you abandon that? Maybe go for Jimenez, but go for Onana instead. Or, have you got another goalkeeper in mind? If you do, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, first and foremost, before I end, again, thank you all so much. Smash that like button. 
let's get to 5,000 likes. Let's see if you guys are actually that epic. And if you are, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to faint and go flipping out. These guys are the best. Simple as that. And I think you are. I think you are already. But, you know, let's certify it. 5,000 likes. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you are new. My social media links are in the description. For, so follow me on those. My other channel, my podcast channel, is in the description as well. Eunice HH. Follow me on there. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you tomorrow for the preview to our first final that we have to play at the end of this season. We've got Wolves, which for me is a final. We've got Arsenal, which is a cup final. And we've got Bayern Munich, which is a final where we have to score three minimum. So it's going to get interesting, guys. It's going to get interesting. Let's see if we can pull it off. But the preview to Wolves will be coming tomorrow. So look out for that one. And I'll see you then. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. Look after yourself. See you tomorrow. Take care and peace.